Yo guys, I'm Jay Beershank. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're here for another edition of book reviews. Glad to have you here. Why do I do this channel? Because I love books and I think that everyone can benefit from reading books so I hope to uh, inspire through this channel. Today we're going to go over East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I've been traveling for about five months uh, out of the United States and John Steinbeck is an American author and it was really uh, refreshing for me to read an American novel. I didn't know how uh, refreshing it would actually be but uh, John Steinbeck captures the American idealism and foundational beliefs of um, Americans so perfectly and I didn't even really realize what they were until reading the book but like since I've been traveling a lot of people have uh, said to me a lot oh you're so American and I always kind of took that with a grain of salt because I feel like when, when foreigners say that to you there's like a hint of like maybe like it's because you're um, crazy you know like narcissistic and maybe like a little bit um, willing to do stupid things and a little bit uh, overly ambitious and stuff but when I read this book it really put in perspective to me like oh wow I guess I am really American because the way that he described these people the book takes place starts in like 1880 and then it ends around like 1940s I think um, so it's really like it's going through the lives of like foundational Americans so it's really 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 interesting um, I really really enjoyed it I recommend it to any American especially so you can really kind of get a good mirror of the sorrows joys triumphs and uh, beauties of your own culture but um, I really really like this book because John Steinbeck did an amazing job of uh, having so many diverse dynamic characters like these um, these characters Maybe let's uh, reference like a novel, like a Dostoevsky novel. Usually in a Dostoevsky novel, you're dealing with like upper class Russian citizens. It's like the aristocratic Russian society is where the book is kind of based around. And, you know, there's some differing subsets of people that are in the book, but they're not so as important as these aristocratic um, people. And so you still get really dynamic characters within that realm of aristocratic characters. But... What John Steinbeck did in this book that I loved so much is the book is about um, about spanning a 60 year period and you go through so many different types of um, people in different situations and they're all uniquely dynamic and what's so interesting is um, he didn't even really make like the same family of people the same like he allowed every character to be so individual and intrinsic which is mirroring real life because that's how people are right we're all mega individual and the way in which we process the world and the information is all so um, particular to who we are so it was so beautiful to read that because all of the characters have such beautiful flourishing personalities some of them are disgusting, some of them are beautiful. I mean, they're all beautiful, but some are just, you know, repulsive. But he still gets, you get such a good look at them. Um, there's a couple characters that I really thought he did an especially good job of. There's a character in this book named Sam Hamilton. Uh, Sam Hamilton is kind of like the uh, archetype of, like, the good father. Like, he's a um, very humble, poor, good man. Just a solid man who is very wise, works really hard, takes care of his family. He isn't necessarily a rich man or a prosperous man, but he's just a good heart. And like he's really portrayed through this book as like um, almost like the symbol or the ideal of what a man should be. And it's kind of ironic because he's not successful monetarily, which is kind of like an American ideal that's kind of like um, slowly replaced um, from like the 1880 start to like the 1940 finish of the book because you can kind of see how the dollar starts to take precedent over um, this uh, you know this r beautiful refined heart so I'd recommend uh, reading this book and focusing on Sam Hamilton and also Kathy uh, or Catherine she is uh, uh, one of the main characters of this book and I think especially the beginning uh, introduction to her as a child you hear about kind of like uh, you get a really great foundation laid for who Kathy is and kind of 
the book says that you can't understand her motives, but you can really start to understand her motives well when you see how she was as a child. And it's just like so horrifically graphic. Not like disgusting, like talking about, you know, any kind of like whatever. It's not like that kind of graphic, but I mean graphic in the way of like you get such a clear picture of how she's thinking and it's just like it's really just blew me away with the kind of character he developed through Kathy and Sam and um, I think that the dynamic of Kathy I've heard a lot before I'm, I'm gonna retrace and kind of give a broad top-down perspective here I've heard a lot that when you read a book the characters in the book are almost more real than people um, individual people you can find in the world because they're representing an archetypal type of person so instead of like me I could represent uh, certain facets of certain archetypes if there is one character that is like a caricature of a certain archetype it makes them hyper real which makes it um, a really great reference point for that type of person but you would never actually find that type of person in real life because the ones in the books are hyper real Kathy is like the hyper real just a venomous bitch like it is just like so wild to read about um, that kind of a cold venomous woman because you can kind of just see you see that in the world and it's like an idea that is portrayed um, in minor cases through many 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 people you're gonna meet in your life but to see it caricatured so beautifully it's just amazing amazing so uh, this book goes through a lot of um, like the Cain and Abel story there's a lot of like um, trying to understand uh, how to feel accepted and loved and like with these uh, crazy mental turmoils going on and um, there's a lot of like uh, neurotic characters so you get to see a lot of um, uh, you get in depth of the characters minds and there's one character in particular his name is Cal uh, he comes in towards the middle of the book and Cal I've resonated with Cal so so much because um, he was about 17 when it, when I started to really resonate with him in the book because Cal was going through these kind of neurotic thoughts where he's almost tormenting himself um, self-indulgently because he feels bad and he feels like he's doing bad things so then he always tortures himself and he's in his mind and he's saying, you know, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this. How can I become better? But he also kind of finds a self-indulgent joy in the torment he gives himself. And the way that uh, Cal's mental uh, processes is described, I think can resonate with a lot of people and is really great mirror for you to read about. And is also just a beautiful character, a beautiful portrayal of a, of a young man and these growing pains. There's a, like, this is a very archetypal book. Uh, people say that, like, stories that resonate at the core last. Like, let's say, this might be a <laughs> um, controversial one, but like the Bible. The Bible has lasted through history. Why? Because all the stories in the Bible resonate with us somewhere deep inside. Because of archetypes or because of these mythological stories. And I think that John Steinbeck really um, epitomized on that and really tried to make the story very archetypal. There's a lot of, like, um, like I said, the Cain and Abel story, East of Eden. I mean, East of Eden is a biblical reference. Um, it's just so much foundational human experience is portrayed through this book because you go through, it's like you go through so many different people's lives and just, it's all so individual. This story is like, it could be 15 stories individually, but it's just all wrapped up into one beautiful one. I think the way that uh, John segued through time is beautiful um, you know you don't feel like things are missed along the way even though these characters are jumping between 10 15 years from children to teenagers and you know from adults and stuff you still really get a good feel for them all I'd highly recommend this book it's so beautiful and um, this book ends on such a foundational simple note it just ends on the idea that we have as humans our only real true responsibility is the opportunity to triumph over evil basically you know and it's not an obligation it's just an opportunity and I think that that is something that we all struggle with throughout our whole lives is trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing and um, that's what this book's really all about is just uh, will you choose to triumph over the evil that's in inherently within your heart and your mind 
or will you, will you succumb to it and justify what you do uh, to be able to fit this mold that you've created of reality that isn't necessarily pure or righteous. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one, guys. There's uh, two parts in particular in this book that I highly recommend uh, thinking about. The part where Lee and Samuel Hamilton are riding back um, to Lee's house and Samuel's carriage. That's one of the most beautiful parts of the book that I loved uh, just passionately, passionately. And there was one more that I thought about that I should reference. Um, can't remember it now. But that part with Lee and Samuel is amazing. I think Lee is a really amazing character to think about. Um, kind of like analyze who Lee is and what kind of foundational archetype he's representing and uh, what kind of lessons you can learn from that type of uh, personality and person and spirit. Lee's an amazing character. Um, yeah guys, so that's my review of this. I uh, hope you enjoyed. We're out here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, we're sitting in a dried up river right now. It's very hot here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It's about maybe like 100 degrees. Um, we're in the dry season. It's gonna start raining here real soon, but it hasn't started yet, so it's pretty dry out here. But uh, yeah, we're out in a dry riverbed. Um, pretty smoky, there are some forest fires going on. It's burning season, so it's quite smoky, but uh, I figured I'd come out here, have a nice scenery for the video. So yeah, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Take it easy, stay in the light, stay in the love. Peace.